All right, hello everybody. My name is Dalton Rullinger, and welcome to eh, what is admittedly kind of a different video from me. Um, I've noticed there's a lot of backlash for a certain game called, uh, what is it, I think Skull and Bones? It's like the newest and great, or newest and quote-unquote greatest pirate game that's come out on the market here lately, and it's not doing so great. So I thought I'd kind of capitalize on the moment and try and catch some people's attention to bring it to this game and help the developer out a little bit. Uh, for anybody who is from Skull and Bones, Sea of Thieves, Tech, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and you're looking for something maybe a little more relaxed, a little more down-to-earth, uh, maybe like looking for something you, ju you can just relax to while you're doing who knows what, uh, I'd like to introduce you to this little game called Sailwind. This game is made by one developer, uh, Raw Lion Studios, and it's, as far as I can tell, as far as I've noticed, it's pretty much like the most realistic thing that's on the market for this kind of genre. Um, you basically play as a merchant marine back in, I would call this probably like the mid-colonial period, maybe? Um, and you basically just play as a merchant going around from island to island, uh, just selling cargo. Uh, you have to do missions at first, and this is not the boat you start with. This is a boat that I bought. This is one of the capital ships in the game. Uh, but the overall point is, this game has realistic sailing physics, and, uh, it's very enjoyable. It, it's kind of hard to get your head wrapped around at the very beginning, but... Uh, if you're looking for something that's, you know, scratching a certain itch, you know, let's say, for, for example, in Sea of Thieves, you know, you have to worry about other players. You, there's, the, the sailing is absolutely not realistic at all. And you're looking for something that's going to scratch that itch. Uh, this game is definitely a pretty safe bet. It currently costs, I think, $20 on Steam. I'm going to go ahead and start unloading the ship here. I've only got this one crate to deliver to this island, but um, I figured for this video I'd show any potential new person what this game is all about. So uh, let's go ahead and sell these gems. And let's see here. I can purchase some sculptures. Wow, sculptures have been nerfed like heavy. Uh, uh, that's, that's the reason why I'm on the wrong currency. Um, eh, you know what? Why not? I'm going to the Dragon Cliffs anyway. Let's just go and take... Yeah, you know, we'll take four of them. Duh! Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes, this game is, once again, it's called Sailwind. And as you're going to see as I'm loading the cargo here, you have to load the cargo uh, very cautiously because there is weight in the game and each ship can only hold so much weight. Thankfully, I've got one of the capital ships, so it can probably hold this. And down, down below deck, I've got a lot more cargo as well that's going to be delivered to multiple different islands. And I figured, you know what, this would be a very good time to just show this game off. Show this game for what it really is. And uh, hopefully spark some keen interest in the game. Kind of give Sea of Thieves and Skull and Bones some, some kind of competition. Now, the game is in very early, well, I say very early. It's an alpha stage, whether you take that for what you will. Um, and as I said, it's made by one person. I'm trying to get my bearings here. So, the wind is blowing. Okay, it's pretty favorable to get the heck out of here at least. So let's just go ahead and do this. Every single sail in the game will have its own levers and pulleys that you have to interact with in order to make your sails turn and lower and raise and and all that kind of stuff. And fortunately, there's not a crow's nest in the game yet. It, the crow's nest would be very welcome in this kind of game. 
uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll just kind of lower the main sail here. If you want to see more of this game, uh, maybe the game piques your interest in this video and you're just kind of on the fence about buying it and you want to see more of it, I do have multiple series of this game on my channel. For the game costing 20, 20 bucks off Steam, I would definitely say I've gotten more than my fair share of entertainment provided from this game for just 20 bucks. I've put, I think I'm approaching 500 hours into this game. So I've, I've definitely gotten $20 worth out of this game. Uh, anyway... We're a little heavy towards the bow here, but uh, I don't really have any anywhere else to put these these sculptures, these statues. So let's go ahead and lower the stray sails here. We'll kind of start picking up some speed if we can. And while I'm sailing through here, it kind of brings up... Let's kind of talk about some of the things that are in the game. Uh, currently, as you can see, you, you have to follow the wind. You cannot sail directly against the wind. Uh, for say, uh, Sea of Thieves players, uh, particularly if you're playing in a sloop, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, there's, there's no sailing against the wind in this game. The wind is going to be, number one, your greatest ally, and number two, your, great, your greatest enemy. Uh, in this particular game. You can sail pretty close to going against the wind, but you can't sail directly against it. You have to... If you imagine a clock, right? Like, kind of picture the the, steer, the helm here as, as a clock. If the wind is blowing from noon, which is the, the pike right here, you cannot sail to the 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock. All that... Those two... This entire region right here is just completely out of bounds, but you can sail very close wind, depending on the type of ship that you've got and your sail configuration, you can sail very close wind to the to the wind. So if you're if the wind is blowing from the from the west, for example, you could sail to the northwest by north or north by northwest. Um the game does not hold your hand either. I should probably point that out. The game does not hold your hand at all whatsoever. If you look in the map, this is the region that we're in right now. I'm willing to bet you probably can't tell where the heck we are. It's because you don't appear on the map. And this is something that I really enjoy about this game. At the, in the very, very beginning of the game, uh, whenever you are first starting out on your first voyage, depending on the start that you get, or the start that you choose, uh, the, the game basically just, it gives you a boat, it gives you a map, it gives you a couple crates of food, it gives you a barrel of water, and it gives you a place to sleep. It gives you a flag at the top of your mast to tell you which way the wind is blowing, and then it basically just says, good luck. Though it does give you a little scroll that you can read up to kind of figure out the very bare basics and figure out what the heck you're supposed to be doing, but other than that, it... Uh, <laughs> It pretty much leaves you hanging. It's, it's it's up to you to figure out what you need to do, how to sell your ship. And I I honestly would not have it any other way. It's very painful at times. Do not get me wrong. You know, like I said, I've got 500 hours in this game. Or getting close to it. And even now, with all this time that I've got into the game, the game is still capable of giving me more than just a headache sometimes. Let's go ahead and bring these in. Okay, I need to release you because you're on the wrong side. Uh, learning sailor's vocabulary will definitely go a long way in in helping you out with this game. It can be a little challenging at first, but eventually you'll catch on to it. I, I'm still not entirely caught up with uh, sailor's language, but uh, I can tell you for a fact it does help regardless. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and raise up the gap sales here. So I should point out that, like I said, this is not a ship that you're going to start with. This is one of the capital ships. This is the ship that you get from uh, from this region right here, the All Lonk region. Uh, it, it costs eighty-eight gold pieces. Actually, it might cost a little bit more. Maybe maybe ninety. I I don't remember. Um. But gold pieces, there are currently three, well, technically four currencies in the game. Uh, you've got the all Lonk Lions for the all Lonk region. You've got the Emerald Dragons for the region that we're in right now. And then you've got the Eastern Crowns for the Eastern region. Then you've got Gold Lions. These Gold Lions are what you need in order to buy ships. And depending on the region that you're in, uh, a single Gold Lion is going to cost a varying amount, depending on which region you're in. Uh, I think it's like several hundred Emerald Dragons just to make one gold coin. So you're going to have to work in order to buy these ships. But there's no uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Microtransactions. There's no multiplayer or anything like that. Uh, there, there's no DLC, at least not yet. There are currently four regions in the game, or four archipelagos more specifically. And while we're heading to our next destination, I'll go ahead and show you these. Uh, there's no time warp or anything like that, though if you look down here, this, this, this green bar right here, this is how fatigued we are. Uh, there is a survival element to this game. You need to drink, eat, and sleep in order to survive. And whenever you're sleeping, the game does speed up. You will gain significant progress whenever you're sleeping, so long as the wind doesn't shift on you. And the wind will shift plenty, trust me. So, let's take a little look-see at the regions here. So you've got the all Ankh region, which is the easy start area. If you're going to take an interest in this game and you want to buy it, this would be the easy start, though the islands in this region are extremely small. Most other islands, or most other archipelagos, you can actually see, like, every island from one another. This region, it's going to be tough to find where you're going, because the islands are very, very tiny. Uh, this here is the Firefish Lagoon, which is to the southwest of where we are now. Uh, this is the harder region to sail around in. It gets very foggy, there's a lot of shallow areas... Uh, you got to be very, very careful if you're going here, and having a map is going to help out a lot, trust me. And then finally, we have the Eastern region. Um, this is going to be the hard start region. And it's kind of the region that I would recommend you start in, because the, the starting ship that you get is the COG, and it has the most uh, deck space. It has the most area for you to actually carry stuff, though you got to be very careful not to overload it. Uh, but every island here, except for Eastwind and Oracle Island, which you don't need to worry about Oracle Island, um, at least during the daytime. <laughs> uh, every island, Siren Song, Fort, Fort Astrin, Sunspire, and Mount Malefic, especially Mount Malefic, you can all see. So, in terms of navigation, I would go for Astrin. In terms of just sailing, I would go for uh, uh, the, 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 the All Lonk which is the easy area. For the Dragon Cliffs, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. If it wasn't for one particular thing, and this is a major particular thing, if it wasn't for this thing, I would actually recommend you start here in the Dragon Cliffs. The reason being is because you can see this island here. You can see that island. And if you look over here, you may or may not be able to see another island. Oh, there it is. You can kind of see it through the through the haze there. Um, for the most part, every island you can see here in in the Dragon Cliffs, which makes which makes which makes sailing pretty easy and. The vast majority of the islands are going to be north of the capital city, which is the Dragon Cliffs itself. Um, 
there are two things that make this a more challenging start. Uh, number one is the currency here is the least valuable. This is the most inflated currency that there is in the game. And reason number two, the big reason why this area is just... I wouldn't recommend starting here is because <laughs> the starting ship, the starting boat, is absolutely horrible. It, it, is the, it is by far the smallest boat in the game. You are going to struggle to get anything on your boat at all. So it, it, as you can see here, if you look at the flags, we're sailing very much against the wind. Now in Sea of Thieves, this wouldn't be a problem. But because I've got gap sails on my, on my ship, which I didn't raise up the, the rear one, come to think of it, because I've got these types of sails, I can sail pretty close against the wind. I can't sail directly against it, but I can sail pretty close hauled. And if you're wondering how effective can the wind be, can your ship actually capsize if, if it catches too much wind? Yes, your ship absolutely will start to list. It will start to take on water. If you take on too much water, you sink and you lose all your cargo. Though, right now in the beta version, there, there's, a, there's an update coming. A bit of a minor update, all things considered. But there is an update coming where if you sink and recover the boat, you actually keep all your cargo and all your valuables. Um, I'm not too sure if I agree with that change if i'm going to be honest i think i i kind of think it takes away the the threat of sinking in a way but i guess it would set you back a pretty decent amount because right now if i were to hit pause and click recover boat we would arrive at where we're going we're heading for uh this big island right down here uh, we're heading for the dragon cliffs themselves and then we're going to head out to down that general direction to the to the south to the southwest and we're going to go to the to the sage hills because down here i have well number one i've got the rabbit furs that are going to the the dragon cliffs then i've got a whole bunch of oranges and other cargo uh, oranges and rice uh, that's not supposed to be like that <laughs> um like i said the game is an early alpha there's going to be some shenanigans like that uh, just try and ignore that if you can. Yeah, I really hope this game catches your attention because the game doesn't get nearly enough attention as far as I can tell. As far as I know, me and just a handful of other YouTubers are dedicated to uploading this game. As far as I can tell, I'm pretty much the most dedicated YouTuber to uploaded content for this game uh, though my content is pretty long though I do try and like make uh, multiple different deliveries in one video or if I'm sailing to another region it can take a long time but speaking of other regions I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on just so you guys can actually see what the heck's going on as well as this so Keeping in mind that there are other archipelagos you can go to, we are currently down at the Dragon Cliffs. This is the world map. If you look down at the very bottom right of the map, we are at the Dragon Cliffs. Up to the very north, you've got, you know, Fort Astron and the Astron region. To the far west, you've got Gold Rock City and the Alonk region. This is how big... Well, actually, the world map is a little bit bigger because... It's around 3 longitude and 27 latitude, which is not even on the map, where the Firefish Lagoon is. So there's even more content that's not on the map. And there's even a, another island that's way, 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 way off to the east called Kronos. Um, so you've really got to learn how to navigate here and i'll kind of show you how you do this whenever you whenever the stars come out a little bit more 
So the, the main thing you want to get whenever you're crossing the ocean or if you're going to any kind of archipelago outside of your own is you want to get the quadrant. This right here is the most important piece of kit you're going to have aside from the compass. They're pretty cheap and you can get them at every uh, port town or every, you know, capital city. Anywhere that sells uh, sailing equipment. So if you look at the North Star, which, if you look at this constellation right here, you've got the star here, the star there, the star there, and the star there. It kind of looks like a, a boat, in a way, or maybe even a bow, if you prefer. So if you look at this star right here, and you right-click, that'll show you your latitude. This is information that uh, you can do... I was going to say something, I just completely slipped my mind. This is the information that you need in order to judge where you are on, in terms of the map. Because if we look at our latitude here, probably 32, 32 latitude. Let's go ahead and put this back away. So 32 latitude, that would put us... Uh, that is not right. That is not a right rating at all. We should be at 31. So apparently I didn't click on the star correctly, but you get the point. Um, I'm just going to try this again because now it's going to bug me. There we go. That's a bit better. So 31 latitude. Which would put us right where we need to be. I must have been off from the star a ways on the first try. Anyway, uh, we'll cover how to cover longitude tomorrow whenever the sun comes out again. Because there are two methods you can use in order to do this, and I should probably loosen the sails here a little bit. I don't know if you could tell or not, but the ship was starting to list quite a bit from from the wind. And I should also mention that the ship that you're seeing here is not going to look like this whenever you first see it. It's going to have lateen sails uh, and not uh, square sails. The reason I have it configured like this is, number one, it handles the wind a lot better. And number two, it's a bit more on theme for the current series that I've got going on. Right now I'm playing as a, uh, I'm role-playing, quote-unquote, role-playing as a tea merchant. Because one of the major exports from one of the islands here, the Sage Hills, is tea and green tobacco, or weed, if you prefer. Uh, if you're curious, the Sage Hills is right down there to the south. So we'll probably be seeing that uh, by the end of the by the end of the, by the end of the video, uh, it's also worth mentioning worth mentioning that the that the Sage Hills is by far my favorite island in the game. All right, so. I'm going to go ahead and sleep, but if I'm going to sleep, I'm probably going to go ahead and rate, uh, lower some of these sails. That way I don't, like, smack directly into the dragon cliffs. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave... I'll leave these two up, and then I'll leave the... You know what? No, I'm not going to leave the bow the bell sail out. I don't know if this thing is even worth having, to be honest. I kind of just use it to get out of port back at, at Newport, but other than that, I don't think it really does much. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and come down here. Uh, once again, all this stuff right here, it, it doesn't really exist in the ship unless you buy it. The only thing that's in here by default is the hammock. You simply just come down here, you go to sleep. And now, it's worth mentioning that 
you cannot wake up on your own. You have to wait for your character to wake up. From So skipping this menu is basically impossible. You're going to look at this menu whenever you're sleeping regardless. Every once in a while, your character will kind of wake up from time to time. For the most part... For the most part, he does wake up, but in this instance, it looks like he might just sleep, like, straight through the night. Nope, here we go. Let's run up here and see where the heck we are. Okay, we need to turn a bit more to the east. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, I should probably mention storms. Storms are a big thing in this game. Storms can absolutely wreck your day if you're not paying attention. Let's see, I think I'm going to leave the wheel a bit more like that, yeah. And then I'll go ahead and start another barrel of water. There we go. Go and bring this up here so it's readily available. And then eat the last of the salmon. Okay, so you can sell these crates back at port. And since we're going to the capital city, I'm just going to hold on to this. But it's worth keeping in mind that... Items like this do despawn. If you get a certain distance away from them, they do despawn. So if you're on a smaller boat and you need to get rid of some weight or you need to like make some room, do not hesitate to just throw stuff overboard. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I know like modern day it wouldn't really be that smiled upon, but uh, it's not exactly modern day in this game, is it? Anyway, I'm gonna see. I'm going to see you guys in the morning whenever we finally uh, broken daylight. Alright, good morning everybody. Looks like we are... We're actually getting pretty close to the, to the Dragon Cliffs. So how's the wind doing? The wind is... Eh, favorable enough, I suppose. Let's go ahead and bring these things back. So there is no sinking, uh, or, well, I mean, there's sinking in the game, but there's no hull damage that your ship takes yet, though I believe that is on the horizon at some point. Right now, the developer is just trying to focus on like the actual sailing mechanics themselves and trying to get the game into a more stable uh, position before he starts focusing on uh, the funner aspects of the game like that. Um, so you can ram into a rock as hard as you want right now as the recording of this video and you'll escape relatively unharmed. Go ahead and let these things fly completely. I might just rely on these for a while. Although, then again... You know what? No, let's go ahead and raise up the, the main gaff here. That should be more than enough to get us into port pretty speedily. Uh, keeps throwing me off if this is up here. <laughs> so as far as cell customization goes, uh, every region has its own unique specialization. For the Dragon Cliffs, it's going to be more along the lines of junk sails, which I'll show you whenever we get to the to the boat that I mentioned before, <laughs> the, the tiny little Kakum boat that you start off with in this region. Um... It's the, it's the exact same type of sails that you, that 
this region specializes in. I don't know why I'm turning off the nav lights here. Um, in the default game, I'm using a mod right now that allows lanterns to be lit unlimited for an unlimited amount of use. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because it allows you guys to see on the video. Otherwise, these things have a very limited amount of use. They won't burn out, like, instantly, but if you were to leave them on, like, 24-7 like I am right now, you'd probably get maybe two and a half days out of them. Okay, um, now gaff sails like this right here kind of come with a slight bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it allows you to sail pretty close hauled to the wind, and it's all, it also really helps out whenever you've got a side wind like this. Especially whenever you have, like, uh, square sails like I've got. Um, the downside with gaff sails is they can make turning very difficult. Especially if you're using just gaff sails alone. If you've got stray sails, it tends to help out a lot. But gaff sails, I don't know what it is about them, but it really, they can really make turning very difficult. And speaking of uh, sailing against the wind, let's go ahead and start raising these things up. We're not sailing against the wind yet, but we will be whenever we're getting ready to dock. Just trying to watch this side, and make sure I'm not gonna, yeah, get, 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 make sure I'm not gonna hit the walls here. Uh, I think we're good on this side. And there is no character customization in this game either. You're basically just a floating camera. I think eventually you will have like a a physical model because if I click the, the third person camera right now you can't see anything right there like where I'm standing right now I'm towards the bow here but sooner or later there will be like an actual physical character standing here ooh this is gonna be difficult yeah there's that rock I was trying to avoid that rock whoo okay the reason I was trying to avoid that rock is because uh, you can get stuck on that rock very easily. You won't take hull damage from it, but if you get stuck hard enough, you will have to like unload your ship and then like physically push the ship uh, off the rock. It sounds a little ridiculous, I know, but you can kind of push your ship around if you need to. All right, so welcome to the Dragon Cliffs, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and just lower this. Get it prepared for docking. So if you look at that boat right there, that is the boat you start off with in this region, and it is tiny. It is itty bitty witty tiny.
and your ship will drift uh, quite a ways on its own, so you can actually use the wind to your advantage if you need to in certain areas. Okay, I'm going to put you right there, and then let's put you... Eh, put you right here. Oh, I don't like that, though. I don't like that. You know what? Just because I don't like that so much, I'm going to put this over here. Alright, so now the boat is uh, moored up against the dock. It's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and start unloading all of the cargo that we've got for this for this area. The ship is probably going to be very happy to have these sculptures off. <laughs> I I don't know if the ability to name your ship is going to be coming to the game or not. I I would love to have that ability to actually like name your ships and have the names like on the bow here or something. But uh, for right now, I just don't think that's on the on the horizon. I would love to see it, but I don't know if it's coming or not. And at some point, sooner or later, this game will be in VR. It, it's one of the later goals for the developer, but it is on the uh, roadmap. All right, so these are selling for 33484 Very good. Then we've got the rabbit furs, which are selling for... Okay, these were like in demand whenever I bought them. I guess the market has changed a little bit. Oh well. Might be taking a bit of a loss in that. Uh, so let's go ahead and sell the salmon here. So yeah, uh, this is the starting boat. <laughs> it, it's This is called the Kakum. It is... Uh, Quite a lot smaller than the the sandbuck over there, but this is the boat that I started on with the with the current series that I'm doing the the tea merchant. I don't know how it keeps scooting along the dock. I'm trying to keep it over here out of the way, but it keeps loosing itself. I don't know how. Anyway, I, what I need to do is I just need to like take this thing out to sea and let it like kind of just drift off into the never-ending blue yonder. Okay, uh, might as well stop at. the market and buy some food rather than digging into my own supplies. So yeah, every capital city is going to have a, a market area like this where you can buy uh, lanterns, uh, fishing supplies. I haven't showed the fishing off yet. I might need to do that. Uh, maps. You've got sailing equipment here. This is the chronometer. This is the cheaper option for uh, fig figuring out your longitude. Uh, the preferred way is the chrono compass because even though it's extremely expensive, this is by far the best tool to use for figuring out your lo your longitude. Uh, and it can also tell you your latitude at the same time as well. And then this is uh, the scroll for telling you how to to use the navigational tools. I'm going to take that because I, I kind of need that. I, I, I can tell you how to use this, but 
actually like being able to do it is something kind of I just can't get my brain wrapped around it. Anyway, let's go over here to the actual food area. There we go. Full food. Can have that back. And then... Unfortunately, they don't have like any energy elix elixirs here. That would be very helpful to have, but... Oh, well. We have one more destination to go to before I end this video, so let's just go ahead and be on our way. Oh, right. Also, the, the types of sales you get with this particular vessel here. You get these kind of junk sales. And that's actually what they're called, junk sales. They're kind of, it's kind of weird, I know, but aesthetically, I don't really care for them, but in terms of, like, usefulness they're some of the better sales in the game but it really just kind of comes down to personal taste i kind of prefer this look myself especially on this type of ship the latines don't look too bad either but uh i'll pretty much always take the square sails and and a gaff sail <laughs> anyway uh, so how's the wind doing the wind is blowing directly from our port side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower our jib sail here, tighten it a bit so it catches some wind, and then we'll just kind of easily drift out of port. The reason I didn't want to use these uh, gaff sails is because they will actually just push me up against the dock. But now that I'm away, I should be able to use them no problem. And I should probably also mention that you <laughs> you see these uh, nav lights that I've got on the side of the ship? You don't actually have to do that. That's just something I do for like my own uh, personal silliness. <laughs> you really don't need to have any lanterns if you don't want them, but they, they do help out in, you know, being... A, Letting you see what the heck is going on, especially at nighttime or in a storm. Speaking of storms, we might encounter one. Uh, that's one thing that the game mentions about this region, the Emerald Archipelago, is that it storms a lot here. So you want to keep that in mind. If you're not ready to experience storms, then the Emerald Archipelago is not the place you want to be coming to. And I'll tell you what, actually, this thing might just need to go back up because the wind's going to be facing against us. We're going to have to tack our way out of here. And if you don't know what tacking is, well, uh, it'd probably just be easier if I show you. I'm going to go ahead and start getting ready for it, though. Two gaff sails for this would be better than one, I think. I should probably just leave that as it is. Okay, so what is tacking? Tacking is whenever you are sailing against the wind. Like, if you need to turn in a certain direction but the wind is blowing from that direction, what you're basically doing is you're turning into the wind, which is called wearing, and then you're trying to get it to where your sails actually catch the wind on the returning vector. So if you're, let's say you're sailing to the two o'clock on the clock, right? And you want to turn to your 10 o'clock. Well, what you do is you would wear into the wind 
at such a hard angle that you would start to face more towards like the the nine o'clock and then readjust your sails like that and then you'd do it again and again and again uh, obviously doing the vice versa uh that that really helps when whenever you're trying to go upwind And what I might do is I might actually go ahead and tighten this. Although I really don't need to. Actually, it might be better to just loosen it. Because I'm about to have to make this turn. Okay, and now we... Do a hard turn into the wind... wind wasn't blowing like directly from the direction I was expecting it to be but uh, we might be fine hopefully come on you're almost at the angle where you can start catching some wind again there we go that a girl. Come on. You can do it. Okay, let's tighten this thing. Okay. If you find yourself kind of stuck like this, what you can kind of do is you can kind of push the bow just a little bit. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that in real life. <laughs> but uh, I might have done more harm there than good. That's what I get for trying to be fancy. be fair, I thought the wind was blowing like more from like that direction than the current direction that it is. Alright, well, just jump overboard, push the ship along. You can press, you can hold the, hold the F key to just kind of push the ship if you need to. You can get it out of uh, various situations. I'm stuck on the mast right now, or the strays. Okay, now that we're out of here, we can go ahead and start lowering down the Genoa. And for the first time in this video, we might be able to have all sails. Or, well, all square sails, at least. Okay, let's go ahead and lower you. Careful not to run into that bit of rock out there. Lower you, and then lower you. I am getting very hungry right now. Now with square sails like this, what you can actually do is, I might have already done this, but you can actually just loosen all of your stuff, except for the 
sails back here on the mizzen mast. I would only loosen these just, just, just slightly because these sails can actually face 90 degrees into the wind or with the wind and they can <laughs> very easily blow you off course. Speaking from experience. And that is what is key in this game, ultimately, is just experience. And you know what? Just for the sake of it, let's just go ahead and lower you down. Couldn't hurt. And all right. Uh, I think I just saw... Yep, there's the island that we're heading for out there in the distance. You might not be able to see it. Uh, the square sail's kind of in the way. There it is, right there. That's the Sage Hills. That's where we're heading, and that's where we'll be ending the video. But I will definitely be showing the Sage Hills off. And for subscribers of my channel, I'm kind of, you know, making this video for people who have never seen this game before, so... I'm going to assume that was obvious. I'm pretty sure I said that at the very beginning, but I'm hungry, I'm not thinking straight. I'm thinking with my stomach right now more than anything else. Actually, you know, I'm going to see if I can find this guy on YouTube. Um, this is a guy that actually, I found him the other day. He sails all over the world in real life. Like, he goes from America to Europe uh, to Asia. He sails across the ocean, uh, across the open oceans. Like, uh, let me see if I can find him. He should be in my subscriptions. Area bugs, no. Ah, here we go. Nope, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I wonder if this guy's even still alive. He hasn't uploaded anything in a long time. Uh... Ah, here we go, here we go. Okay, so it's Ham Holmes... Sam Holmes Sailing. I'll try and leave a link in the description box or maybe even the comment section below. But yeah, I highly recommend watching his videos if sailing is of, in of any interest to you at all whatsoever. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get out of YouTube before I accidentally click on something. Okay. So, we're getting pretty fatigued right now. Right now, I think I'd like to just put you there. So, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll raise up the top cell here. If I was sailing out on the open ocean, I would be leaving all these sails up. I wouldn't be slowing down at all whatsoever. But because our destination is not that far away, I'm going to go ahead and raise some of these things up. Uh, which one am I raising up here? I think I'm raising up... Okay, I raise up the jib sail. And then I'll raise up the bow sprint sail as well. This is just so I don't overshoot my destination. 
I haven't showed up the fishing yet either, but the fishing is pretty basic. You basically just attach a hook to to your pole, you throw the pole overboard, or you throw the you cast the line overboard, and then you basically just sit and wait. And whenever you catch a fish, you use your mouse wheel to to reel it in. And then you put it on the stove, and you throw a piece of firewood on the stove. The stove that I have right now could hold up the four fish, uh, but that is the all -onk style oven. If you go for the emerald dragon ovens, you can have three fish. Then I'm going to assume with the eastern region, you can only have two fish. I, I, I don't know, though. I've never bought the eastern ovens. All right, so where are we? Okay, I see the island, but we are definitely in a storm right now. Well, there's a storm about the form. Storms in, storms in this game can be absolutely terrifying. Let's see here. I'll tell you what, actually, what might be the best course of action, considering the direction the wind is blowing, is it might be better to just kind of sail around the island and then kind of face to the north. And if that's what I'm going to be doing, then I should probably just go ahead and raise these up. Okay, that over there is the island, which means that's got to be a storm. Yeah, because if that's the island, that's that's too big for it to be the island. That's and that's moving away. So storms do not mean instant death, and unlike in Sea of Thieves, your ship does not fill full of water in a storm. Um, that might change in the future, who knows. But if you take on water, you basically just have to wait it out. It will eventually just kind of despawn after a few, a few minutes. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and start raising up these gaff sails. You will definitely learn how to be very strategic with your approaches, uh, depending on what the wind is doing. Um, it is worth mentioning that the wind blows... There are trade winds in the game, so the wind does blow uh, in certain directions, depending on the region that you're in, for the most part. Uh, right now, in the region that we're in, the wind blows primarily to the west. So, Gold Rock, Dragon Cliffs to Gold Rock City is... Generally speaking, a very easy mission, a very easy way to build up a lot of money. Uh, but Gold Rock State to the Dragon Cliffs is an absolute no-go. You do not want to do that until you learn how the trade winds act. But then Gold Rock City up to Aestrin, the wind blows to the northeast from Gold Rock City. So Gold Rock City to Aestrin is an absolute do, is an absolute green light, but... Uh, that's not going to be a very easy journey, especially if you're in the Dow and you and you just started. The Dow being the uh, the ship that you start off with in in that region, and we are about to hit land here. I might actually need to just kind of lower down the, the jib sail here. The jib sail allows you to cut into the wind a bit easier. I 
There we go. It's not going to get any tighter than that. And once I see the opening of the the island over here, I'm going to go ahead and make the turn. I might need to sail out a pretty decent ways just to ensure I can make that turn. Okay, we're not taking on any water or anything. That's good. Uh, how's my water supplies doing, speaking of water? Okay, I've still got four full barrels of water left. Should be okay to make this turn now. Okay. Loosen these. And then loosen these. I can't see the flags. I see the lights of port if I do this. No, I cannot. Alright, let's get these stray, stray sails tightened up. There we go. And then... So, it's not very easy for me to tell where the heck we are right now, but we are leaning into the wind quite a bit here. I'm going to go and loosen the sails a little bit. Okay, there's the light support. I can see them. So in that case, let's just go ahead and lower you. Turn a bit sharper. Lower you. So welcome to the Sage Hills. This is by far my favorite island of the game. Okay, let's go ahead and start turning into the dock. Now, there are actual water physics in the game. The more you turn, the more your ship slows down, which can help a lot whenever you're uh, docking. Okay. Looks like the sun's starting to come out.
All right. So now we have all of this stuff to unload, but I'm not going to make you guys watch that. I will cut this out. Alrighty, folks, I got all the cargo unloaded. That is 10 crates of oranges, and that is 8 crates of rice. That's that's a lot of rice. Uh, I'm just going to double check real quick. Uh, yes, yes, all this stuff is unloaded, in fact. Good. And now we can just come over here and find oranges. Very good. And then the rice. Very good. All right, that is going to be this episode done, or this video done. It wasn't really an episode, but um, I really hope that this video piqued your interest and you are interested in checking this game out. I love this game. I adore it to death. I will do everything within my power to actually like try and get this game out there uh, for the greater public to see, uh, because I think this game really deserves it. It is... As of this moment, as far as I can tell, it is absolutely one of a kind. So if you are someone from Sea of Thieves and you have a certain itch that Sea of Thieves just can't really tap into for you, maybe this game will be uh, what you are looking for. I hope it is. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is going to do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment. If you want to see more of this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. And uh, help me kind of get past 400 subscribers. That would really mean the world to me if we could get past 400 subscribers and maybe even upwards of 500 subscribers someday. Um, but this is going to be where I leave you. Uh, until next time, guys, God bless. Take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.